In this video, I'm sharing the easiest way to redo end tables with all-in-one paint that does not require sanding, and it's durable without a top coat. Don't let these end tables fool you. The one that looks like it has two drawers really doesn't have any drawers, but I still had to remove the knobs from the fake drawer fronts. While these both look like they are high quality end tables, the underside of the smaller one didn't even try to hide that it was made of particle board and oak wood veneer. With the hardware off, I brushed on some deglosser to clean and degloss the surface to get it ready for paint. I brushed it on, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then I wiped it all off. While cleaning, I could see that the finish on the small table was worn out and damaged. The other had a little bit of damage to its finish, so I sanded both of the tops with 220 grit sanding screens to smooth out the finish, and then I cleaned up the dust with a vacuum and tack cloth. For this paint, that's all I had to do to get these tables ready for paint. Actually, I didn't even have to sand the tops, but that's because I like to sand things to make it look better. Seriously, this stuff sticks so well and covers so well without any more prep. The one downside of this paint is that it doesn't level out if you brush or roll it on, but when you spray it on, it dries to a perfectly flawless finish. So I poured the Heirloom Traditions paint through a filter and into my paint sprayers container, and then I added about 20% water to the paint. I used the markers on the side of the container to see how many ounces of paint were in the container, and then I multiplied that number by 0.2 to figure out how much water I needed to add. And then I mixed the paint and the water together really well and put my paint sprayer together. I tested the sprayer on some cardboard to make sure it was spraying with a fine mist and to adjust how much paint was coming out of the sprayer with the knob behind the trigger. My airflow setting was around four or five. That's it, I was ready to spray. The large end table took a bit to spray because of the inside shelf and I accidentally unplugged the sprayer while using it so it splattered a bit and dripped out the front. But I cleaned it up and was able to keep going without any more splattering just like normal. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't use my expensive Fuji paint sprayer anymore because this one is just as good for a fraction of the price. This is the first time it ever splattered on me and it was because it was suddenly unplugged while it was spraying. Then I let the paint dry for a couple of hours. When I came back, I lightly sanded everything with a fine grit foam pad to make sure that everything felt super smooth. Once again, this is not necessary, but I'm just over the top sometimes. There was mostly just a little bit of gritty texture on the tops from the overspray landing back on the tops. Then I cleaned off the dust with a tack cloth and I sprayed on another coat of paint and let it dry. I had some more paint in the sprayer and there were a couple of spots that I had missed, so I sprayed on one more coat a couple of hours later and then I cleaned out the sprayer. And here's what they look like now. I love these cute little hexagon knobs against the navy blue and I absolutely love how fast and easy it is to paint furniture with Heirloom Traditions paint and a Wagner paint sprayer. And no, this is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. 
What do you think of the new look? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and I've tested the durability of this paint so many times and every time it passes my scratch test within only a couple of days of it drying. No top coat needed. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more of our videos. Are you confused and not sure where to start with your furniture makeover? Don't worry, I got your back. Click the link in my comment to download our free painting checklist so you can paint your furniture as if you hired a professional to do it.